Welcome to our PD. Um, it's using visual text to increase language production and proficiency in the classrooms. So we're going to um, look at the norms first. Those are the same professional um, development norms that you've seen in all our PDs. Be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. So everything that we do um, in those uh, bite-sized PD also fits within our um, Kenyan school district uh, framework. Um, we are naturally doing the standards for instruction. They are um, what we're doing, are uh, use the priorities. And uh, they are also a good way to collect the data for our students. Our learning intention and success criteria will be the learning intention is I am examining a visual text using the instructional hierarchy. The rational, we are doing this in order to increase language production and proficiency in our classroom. And uh, for our success criteria, we will know we've learned it when we can incorporate the instructional hierarchy to analyze a visual text. So here is our agenda for our um, PD. We're going to look at the instructional hierarchy, what they are, and how we're going to use them. We are also going to look at what is a visual text, why should we use a visual text, how we're going to use it, and when we're going to use it in our in the pro, in the progress of the lesson. And then we're going to see how we can analyze a visual text. So this will be an example. Um, and then it will be your turn to apply um, that example to uh, your um, own visual text. So let's go ahead and start with these um, instructional priorities. And you can find those best practices also in your instructional guide. So the instructional hierarchy, um, you have three stages. You have the acquisition, the automaticity, and the application. Those um, instructional hierarchy we use also to, um, they are also called DOK level, depth of knowledge. And uh, the depth of knowledge um, steps work um, the same as your hierarchy. And so this is what we're going to apply. In the acquisition stage, stage it is really the basic stage. It is a recognition. In the automaticity, the students are going to um, use what they have learned in order to um, to, uh, to it would be to to create sentences or to to conjugate verbs for the application the students are going to combine everything that they learn in order to make sense out of what they have in front of them so the year the again the instructional hierarchy can be find uh, found in your instructional guide and they are in the common pages at the beginning so the instructional hierarchy, as you look at your instructional hierarchy in your um, instructional guides, think of this question. How does they support students, diverse learners? How are you using those in your classroom? And what question do you have about those instructional priorities? Those instructional uh, hierarchy, it's all about uh, the context. So we're going, to, uh, uh, we're going to identify the depth and the extent the students must demonstrate their learning. They will communicate the learning in a given opportunity. And we just have to remember that <clears throat> in those instructional hierarchy, one level is not better than the others. Every level has a focus and a purpose in the scope and sequence of the unit lesson, because we all going from the more scaffolding to the more open for the students. So make sure that you understand that not one is not better than the other, but all of them have a purpose and they are used in the lesson. So what is a visual text? Here are examples of visual text that you may have seen. So you have advertisement, you have flyers, you have magazine. You can have also what we also find a lot, infographic, graph, or 
simply a picture. Um, it's also very interesting and very useful to use dif different variety of visual text because it will help the students learn how to look at a text, look at, um, analyze the text. So they're giving them a different possibility and different perspective. So do introduce a different kinds of visual text in your classroom in order to also have a variety and to be able to um, get to um, all the students' interest. So why are we using um, a visual text? So our visual text are more uh, memorable. One of the most effective ways to encourage information is to make um, is, is, is an important jump from the limited short-term memory to the more powerful long-term memory. And it is in pair text with images. Studies show that we retain approximately 10 to 20% of written or spoken information but around 65% of information when it is presented visually. So seeing something by just looking at a picture, students will remember more what they have seen than just talking about it. Um, it is also a faster transfer of information because the information is presented visually. It is processed extremely quickly by the brain. Um, it helps students communicate with the world around them. Um, traditionally, we can think of literacy as a two-way between reading and writing, but we need also to incorporate a visual text or visual literacy because it will involve a similar process, but this time we have to interpret the image and create um, create the meaning. And also what is beautiful uh, with using using a visual text, there is no right or wrong answer. It is, it is what the students is going to get out of the information that he sees in a text. Um, it enriches understanding because while the image is used to introduce to them the content of the lesson, um, it is, I mean, you can often make it accompanied by a text or an audio. And uh, just by looking at a picture, the, the students can go deeper and we can guide those questions for the students. We can help them um, go deeper and deeper into analyzing the, the, the visual text. And we're gonna see do that all together. Um, it makes the learning more fun because basically you're going to introduce the media that the students like better than just reading a plain text. And basically also, also create a more educated um, image reader because they, um, they will be able to, to look at what is important in a picture, what is, um, what is just um, added to the picture and so on and so forth. Um, it also support the multilingual learners because a, a visual text will have, um, I mean, basically uh, there are pictures or a graph and therefore it will make, it will be easier for multilingual learners who are learning English to look at a picture and to be able to say, oh yes, I know what this um, image is talking about. So it will help them also in that sense. It gives teacher immediate feedback because basically we can ask the, tuition, the students basically, um, I give you perhaps um, one minute to write it down everything that comes to mind when you look at this picture or in a language class, you can just ask them, just go ahead and write down um, a vocab that you see, uh, expression that we could use, what do you think is this image about? So basically by doing this kind of intervention, we can scaffolding, we can basically help students um, immediately um, and we get the feedback on where are our students. Um, it attracts students' attention because it's um, it's always better to look at a picture with different colors than looking at um, a text. Um, it enhances the presentation and it presents the information and the new material in a concise way and it keeps students engaged in a topic. So all those are 
I mean, really good reason why we use a visual text. And students will respond, they do respond to it more in a more engaging way. So they are more um, inclined to get into the lesson. So basically we attract them into the lesson in order for them to be able to keep on going. Um, how are we going to use the visual text? Well, viewing and talking about the visual text and then taking notes as we're doing this reinforces students' concept um, that they are learning. Basically, the first step to look at a visual text or visual literacy will be to uh, basically to literal observation. So before reading, uh, we can talk about the picture before reading a text or a book or an article, a newspaper article, you can look at the picture and you can ask the students, for example, what do you notice? So again, the, the beauty of a visual text of visual literacy that there's no right or wrong answer. So what do you notice? After that, the second step, and we remember that it has also to connect with your um, um, hierarchy or your GOK level. So how, do, how would you interpret that, um, that visual text? So what do you see that makes you say that? So according to what are the students um, answer, then you can go further and you can just go ahead and try to see how much they can um, connect, what, um, what kind of ideas do they have? How are they supporting their ideas? So it's a whole, it, it, it's a whole new way of teaching a lesson using a, a visual text. And then evaluation as an application, what more can we find? Those are um, helpful question. You can ask, you are more than welcome to um, have your own question. Um, but the first one always start at, uh, what I mean, what do you see? What do you no notice in the picture? So make sure that your picture represents what you have, um, that, your pic that your picture, that your visual, I should say, represent your lesson in general. Um, this is one way of um, analyzing um, a visual text. So make sure that you pay attention to, to the grade level, to the topic. And what is the objective for that visual? Why do you want to use uh, that visual and how are you going to use it in your, in your content area? So the first step will be again to label. So read all the caption and the text in the image and write things uh, that you notice. So th this is, you can create, you can create um, a graphic organizer who looks like that and just give it to your students or complete this with your students at least for the first time when you're doing uh, when you're analyzing a visual text so the first step again is to label then examine the visual write down things that you notice or that you wonder um, notice viewpoints and biases determine what is the purpose might be um, source of credibility determine where the image come from is it credible and finally, summarize, explain, or expand. And uh, by writing a summary of the, of the image and asking them to go beyond and to think what other connection they can find, <clears throat> basically you're asking students to, to, to go and think deeper. So by having a protocol for reading or for interpreting, analyzing an image, you, you can help the students go from the GOK1, which is recognition, to all the way to summarizing, explaining, and expanding what they're talking about. <clears throat> so as a review, <clears throat> so if we if we blend together the instructional hierarchy and the visual text connection, this is what we get. So on the acquisition stage, you have the label and the examining the visual. So this is where students are going to recall, restate, reproduce what they see. And students will have to show the knowledge that they use and describe the visual support. In the automaticity, basically your students are gonna show you how and why is the knowledge used. So students are gonna think of how to explain the answer, outcome, result, or solution using reasoning supported by evidence. And by using um, reasoning supported by evidence to defend what they have, it also helps them um, um, makes more sense of what they're saying and also using the tools that they have seen previously in the other perhaps chapter in your class. Um, the emphasis here is 
how well students can use the knowledge and the skills in order to explain or justify or validate their reasoning. And again, the beauty of doing something like that is that there's no right or wrong. It is just what are your elements in order to justify what you're doing. Um, finally, the application, if this is where students are going to transfer and they're going to share everything that they have learned and uh, use it in a different context, in a new situation. Or they're going to use a new knowledge to address and explain and respond to a real world scenario or situation. Teaching and learning goes deeper at that level within one subject area. And it goes beyond them, the, uh, your classroom content, because this is where the students are going to make a connection with another content area. So this is how we can connect individual and the um, instructional hierarchy in order to help students go deeper in their understanding of the, of the concept. And again, there, the beauty of using those is that there's no right or there's no wrong answer. Students are able to think about a text in a numerous way through different lenses because everybody is going to see something different. They're going to create a meaning from images, which in turn is going to improve their writing proficiency and critical thinking skills. Remember that students are going to go through the DOK level from DOK1 all the way to DOK4. Um, uh, uh, students are going to be able to evaluate the content and the text that is presented in different format and media. So it also helps them gain experience in interpreting a visual text. And they can learn that they can use their imagination to see and think between and beyond the line that draw inferences and conclusion. And this is how our beautiful students are gonna, are gonna be able to go deeper into their analysis. So let's go ahead and try it. And we're going to try to apply. So using analyzing the visual text to, um, to this visual text. This one is, um, um, as you can see, it's been it's in Spanish. And um, it has to do about food. So when you look at this picture and you think of the first uh, step will be to label what you see. So here, you can, a students could list the colors, they could talk about uh, the different kind of food, they can talk about uh, um, the colors that you have on your screen and on the image. Um, students can go and talk about what they like to eat, what they don't like to eat, they can talk about fast food, um, they can make, um, and when they examine the visual, they can make a connection between the bright color, what we eat perhaps, and our health. So this is how we can do the first step of acquisition when looking at this um, visual text. Um, on the second step, we can look at the balance, perhaps between nutrition and eating healthy. Um, if we have to look at the credibility of the source, here, this infographic was published by, uh, you, and you can see it on the top of your screen, about the um, American Heart Association. And so you, um, you can explain to your students, so, so you know that this is a credible source because it comes from a, a validated um, it's a credible image because it comes from a validated source. And you can talk about the benefits of eating healthy, of exercise, of uh, having perhaps um, a better life, of doing exercise. And then for the last step that has to do with the application, this is where our students can explain the, result, the results of um, healthy eating habits and how what we eat affects our health, our quality of life, and the cost of healthcare, and so on and so forth. So basically, your students in the last part of application can make a connection to um, good um, healthy habit, the um, uh, effect it has on our health, um, the quality of life that it provides, and perhaps even going further into the cost of, um, of healthcare. So that's one way to interpret this image. 
So this is what I was just talking about. So this is one way to analyze the picture that you have in front of you. Um, everything that we have done and the GOK level and looking at the visual text or visual literacy is really representative of the Act for um, Standards in um, Languages. So basically, you are the goal is communication, uh, presentational, interpersonal, interpretive. You are reading, you are listening, you are speaking, you are writing, you are listening to speak, you are reading to write. And you're doing comparison, communities, culture, and connection. Basically, you're bringing everything together just with one single picture. And it also the connection with the wisers. When you when we look at wisers, basically by using by using them the DOK, and you basically are scaffolding. Um, you are basically scaffolding all the steps for the students. You give them a, a, a good basis so they can go up in level. It's a stronger instruction, and it's also a, a more clear instruction because the students are um, understand what um, what they're doing. It, the students are better engaged, and uh, then you you can you in turn you can you can do, you can ask more of the students, but also they will give you more because if you start by looking at the visual text where it engage students, then your inquiry is going up automatically. It makes students thinking visible because you can guide the question. There's no right or wrong, and you help them develop their thinking. And it's a greater access to your content through languages. Um, so again, the connection with wider, you are viewing, you are talking with a partner, with a whole, uh, with a whole class about the visual text. So you are taking notes, so you're writing. And again, remember your steps for um, looking or analyzing um, an image is uh, um, first is the literal observation. Then you're going to do the interpretation and then you're going to evaluate. Now it's your turn. So with a partner or individually choose an image of your own that has to do with your topic within your instructional guide. And, and choose an image that is engaging and that will attract your students. And then um, go ahead and complete the chart. You can use the slide 16 and 17. You can um, go ahead and copy the slides. You are um, welcome to create your own as long as you make sure that when you create your, um, your graphic organizer, you have a progression, a scaffolding in order to help your students um, analyze the, the text. And um, that is it. Thank you.